classic car confession time. I've never driven a classic Mini. It seems odd for someone whose job is pretty much exclusively to work with old cars and who loves small cars on principle, but yep, never driven one. This was of most outrage to our man Jeff, whose first car was a Mini, whose second car was a Mini, and I'm willing to take a fairly safe bet that third, fourth, fifth, and probably sixth cars were all Minis as well. To this day, he's got getting on for a dozen of the things, and he claims it is the best British car ever made. But not me. For a start, I'm too young to know what it's like to be able to buy one of these for 500 quid. By the time I was learning how to drive, a classic Mini was three, four, five grand for a decent one. And also, I'm more into the Fiat scene. I prefer Italian cars to British ones primarily, and that means I've never really been involved with the whole British and Mini scene. Today though, I'm finally getting to drive one, and all bar the BMW R50 Minis, arguably one of the most controversial ones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Mini Clubman. Our younger viewers, and yes, I'm in that bracket, might think that the Mini Clubman is an estate, and indeed, in modern BMW nomenclature, it is. But in fact, the Clubman estate was just one variant of this, the 1969 generation, where the Mini lost its cutesy, curvy 50s front end for a more square-jawed, aggressive 70s style. And it must be said, I really rather like it. By 1969, the Mini was a decade old car and BL felt that going into the 1970s, it couldn't continue to sell on its cutesy looks alone. So Roy Haynes was brought in to design this brand new front end ready for a new decade. But this being British Leyland, it was done on a shoestring. For a start, the indicator and side light units are taken straight from an Austin Maxi. And when you look at this front grille, that looks to be straight from a Maxi as well. But I think that's a good thing. For a start, it unifies the family look and made the Mini and the Maxi clearly be from the same manufacturer. But also, I think the Mini suits this square-jawed, more aggressive, brasher front end a lot better than it did the curvaceous shape we got used to with the Mark 1. There's also the practicality side of things. Because you haven't got the front end curving down inwards and the front wings curving into the bonnet, there's a lot more space under the bonnet to actually get access in a Clubman. If you actually need to work on a Mini, this is the one you want to do it on. But this particular Clubman is a little bit different because this hasn't got the manual, this has got the automatic gearbox. But in itself, it's actually quite a clever bit of packaging, as if the Mini itself already wasn't. Because it's not a three-speed. It's a four-speed automatic gearbox, still located, remember, in the sump of the engine. That's some deeply impressive packaging, bearing in mind you weren't exactly spoiled for space under the bonnet in a Mini as it was. And as for that auto gearbox itself, well, it's actually not bad. The gearing is extremely low. In fact, here's an example of just how low that gearing is. First, second, third, fourth. Top gear in about 10 seconds. <laughs> but when you're on the move, it's fine. Hitting the throttle and it does kick down. It's eager. It picks up speed really rather well considering how little power it's got. That's 60 miles an hour there. That's hardly any effort at all. I can see how Jeff will have spent most of his youth bashing these down B roads at uh, anti-social speed, shall we say. Because it's so easy to get it up to speed and just keep it there. And it's so noisy and so bouncy. And it feels so incredibly light because it is. It encourages you to keep going. This is that mini grin. Jeff, I get what you've been going on about all this time. This is brilliant. Even with an auto, it's good fun. You've still got that A-Series wine, obviously, so don't go thinking this is a refined car. And indeed, the Clubman on the whole didn't really improve on refinement from the standard Mini. You still get minimal equipment that wouldn't be in any way alien to someone used to a Morris Minor. And the refinement is, um... no, no, it isn't. In fact, these cars were so incredibly basic that up until 1973, the Clubman still shipped as standard with cross-ply tyres, even though radials were standard by the early 70s. But even after 1973, when radials became standard, you could still opt for cross-plies. And if you did, you saved yourself eight pounds on the price of your Mini Clubman. Now that is back to basics. Layla knew that this new front end wouldn't be to everyone's taste after the cutesy original Mini, so they offered as many variants as possible to broaden the Clubman's appeal. But perhaps the most loved of all the Clubman variants was the hot one, the 1275 GT. 
As well as a bit more power, the 1275 GT also got thick black stripes down the side, just as brash as the rest of the styling. You got 10 inch Ross style wheels, and underneath them, you got Cooper style disc brakes. What's more, it was the first Mini to come as standard with a rev counter, and this being the way for the Clubman, it was cheaper to buy than the Cooper S and cheaper to insure. Yes, it was a bit slower to 60 and not quite as fast at the top end thanks to its slab nose front end, but objectively, it was the better car. And the days are gone when a 1275 GT was a poor man's alternative to an early Cooper. These days, a really good one can sell for 20 grand. That's where Coopers were 10 years ago, and I reckon if you've got a good 1275 GT, you got yourself a bit of an investment. So over 50 years from when it was launched then, where does that leave the Clubman today? Well, for me, I think it's the classic Mini that you should buy. I prefer these square-jawed 70s looks to the original Mini. They're cheaper to buy, they're cheaper to insure. It's easier to work on them under the bonnet. You've got just as many variants to choose from with the option of some fantastic 70s colors. And let's not forget, like a lot of cars from the 70s, the styling is very rapidly becoming popular. So the days might be numbered where a Clubman is the cheaper option. So join the club and get what might well be the Mini at its best. Hee <laughs>